Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. And here is your daily dose of Missoula. And in and what's happening in and around the city of Missoula, I got uh, weather. I got the premiere of Flagstrip Friday. I got pre-critic. I got some... Um, um, city Council, a special uh, thing from the uh, school board meeting that was done on Tuesday. I also have a guest here. I got Chrissy McMullen and Stacy Hogue from um, Mountain Home, and they're talking about Strong Moms Ask for Help, which is an event that's happening this Saturday. And I'll talk a little bit more about this later on in today. It's a, uh, a services provided to uh, mothers. So let's uh, talk about what's happening in terms of the weather. So if you guys check out the weather, it is going to be raining this weekend. Uh, but today, you can expect sunny, sunny days. Um, your high is going to be 73 degrees. Your low is going to be 47. You can expect uh, highs in the 70s. Um, but then, of course, things are going to really start cooling down this weekend with showers that are likely in the 90s to 60 percentiles. And pretty much throughout Saturday and Sunday, you're going to have rain. Even Monday, going to have some of that rain. Hopefully, be able to wash out a lot of, more of those fires. But it seems like uh, pretty much fire season is pretty much wrapped up. Uh, I just recently watched um, the Lolo National Forest update, and it was the last update that they did. So on the 26th, uh, they basically um, are they've basically been in the mop phase for most of the time, but they pretty much wrapped up everything. So everything's going good. Skies are clear. Everything's good to go. Friday is going to be a beautiful day, so if you're going to be out and about, it's also a great time for some football because tonight there's going to be a football game going on between Sentinel High School and I believe it's Glacier Wolfpack. So we'll be live streaming that on MCAT tonight as well. So let's talk about what's happening on the um, in the Missoula scene. So the Montana Book Festival in it's, it's in its hump days of uh, today. Uh, but last night brought a local favorite, Whiskey and Pie, which had uh, writers of all sorts come together to talk about how Whiskey and Pie has influenced their lives. And we have a clip uh, from one of the uh, speakers at the, uh, at the event last night. Some people, on the other hand, Luna said, pointing a hot pink fingernail at me, sleep with the enemy. I don't know how they face the mirror in the morning. Oh, well, that's easy. It's how some of us exact revenge on the colonizer. Sometimes I'll date white men just to destroy them. It's a form of resistance. <sighs> You're so full of sh little Miss Apple Pie. Apples. What natives who are red on the outside and white on the inside get called a slur usually or what our father teasingly called our mother his term of affection apple pie this coming from luna who was fond of saying i like my men like i like my fry bread round brown and greasy she may as well have been talking about apple pie Luna's lackluster attitude about love explained why it had taken eight years of living together, not to mention producing two children, before she finally agreed to marry Raphael. At her wedding shower, someone had asked what made them decide to finally get married after all that time, and Luna said, oh, I gave him an ultimatum. Oh, really? You told him to put a ring on it or else? No, he wanted to get married. It was me who didn't want to. Why not? I told him he needed to get a personality. All right, so that was a little excerpt from um, Whiskey and Pie, which it was a, a wonderful reading by a bunch of people, and it, it was spearheaded by uh, two people who basically travel around um, uh, the north northwest Pacific coast and just kind of does these events for people, and they get writers, local writers, to tell their stories influenced by whiskey and pie. So the Montana Book Festival is going to basically be going on um, all weekend long, and you can find out more information by going on to montanabookfestival.org. Our very own Joel Bear, general manager at Missoula, um, during his sh show, Missoula Live, um, talked to uh, the um, the spearheader of the program, and they talked a little bit more about this. So you can watch Missoula Live anytime to find out more information about the Montana Book Festival. But if you want to know the schedule, go to montanabookfestival.org. Um, in state news... Um, the YWCA of Billings is looking to raise an additional $1 million as part of building emergency housing for women of domestic violence. Um, with $3.6 million already raised, the YWCA of Billings is hopes to provide a 24-unit complex that would offer women and their children a place to rebuild their lives. 
They, uh, these living arrangements last for two years, while YWCA services help these families through counseling, child care, and other services. Uh, information about YWCA Billings um, Social Equality Initiative and its mission to save, change, and improve lives is available, available by uh, visiting www.ywcabillings.org or by phoning 406 406- Two five two six three oh three. So that's what's happening in and around Billings. We got another. Uh, we got some guests waiting in the wings. So we're gonna be throwing an art clip, which will be lasting this week and next week, and it's being featured at the Zootown Arts Community Center. And uh, our very own Joel Blair did go there, and uh, he got some footage from the Monsters exhibit. So here's some footage from that exhibit going on there. But you should check it out because it will be over by next Saturday. So when we come back, we're going to have our guests from um, Mountain Home to talk about Strong Moms Ask for Help. We got some guests from Mountain Home. Um, we got Chrissy and we got Stacy, and they're here to talk about Strong Moms Ask for Help, which is a, a kickoff campaign event for an October event that's happening um, in October, of course. Um, so, uh, if you guys want to talk a little bit more about this, what is Strong Moms Ask for Help? Sure. So, the point of Strong Moms Ask for Help is to let all moms everywhere know that it is not a weakness to ask for help. And the reason we really need this campaign is that there's still a lot of stigma around asking for help for moms, um, particularly when it comes to mental health care. Um, a lot of moms, I think, fear being considered incapable or incompetent, like mm-hmm. if they admit that they're struggling with something, that people might judge them as bad parents. And of course, that's the last thing any mom wants. Like Right. And, you, and you also uh, protect their privacy as well. Absolutely. It's like that's above and beyond else. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. So um, if you were to get services at Mountain Home, our mental health center, we are a licensed mental health center, and of course, we keep your, you know, information confidential Mm -hmm. Um, and but we really want the campaign to even be broader than just what Mountain Home is offering so that moms can support each other and have a kind of network of discussions and share tips and ideas with each other um, about parenting and just coping with the day-to-day um, stress of right. parenting, as well as the joys, and share those too. Right, you know, it's it's not perfect. It's it's uh, it's yeah. it's it's a mixture of wonderful. It's it's basically, I think the word is divine, because yeah. divine is both a mixture of just like horrifying horror, uh, right. from what your kids can get into, and like you're trying to prevent your kids from like getting into places. It's like, <laughs> right. oh, sorry. Uh, it's like get out of no, no, get out of there. Stop, stop, and then. A lot of times the kids are just like, guess what I learned? And I do a picture of mommy and, and all that stuff. <laughs> right. But it's, right. It, it's, it's interesting mm-hmm. for sure. But um, you guys are, your goal is to get 2,000 moms. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We want 2,000 moms to yeah. sign the pledge okay. to ask for help when they need it and to offer help when they can. Because yeah. we've all got strengths and we've all got challenges. Mm-hmm. So we're not, I think a lot of people think of Mountain Home as a, group home for teen moms and that Mm -hmm. we do offer that service but we offer a whole lot more and this is one way that we're trying to let people know that it's a much bigger 
um, program than you might expect. And all moms of any age, we want you to go onto our website and sign the pledge. All right, and your website is? Uh... Mountainhomemt.org. Yep, and here it is. Is there anything that um, on this website people can go to for like to learn more about it as well since we're on here? Oh, yeah. sure. Stacy, why don't you? Share yeah. some of the um, so just le learning more about our ho housing program, our supportive services program, are those top buttons. Um, if you have, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so this is housing. So it shows that we are providing both stable housing. So this is independent living and group home living. We have apartments, five apartments, as well as the seven rooms in our group home. Um, we have supportive services through our mental health center as well. So um, we just offer a lot of services from employment uh, support, educational support, um, therapy, case management, support staff, our resource center. So just you know, some information on, is given on that part. Cool. There's a tab at the top to make a referral as well. And so if you know somebody um, who maybe needs some support, um, we'll re get back to cool. that person after referral within a week. So how often, um, like compared to people who just um, come in and just like seek help versus uh, how many people get referrals. It's just like, oh, this place is a great place for that you guys can go check out. Like, in, like how many, uh, like, I guess, I don't want to use the word customers, but mm -hmm. like how many yeah. Um, yeah. like are referred it versus how many people are just walk-ins? Mm -hmm. So we serve about 50 moms and 70 kids every year. Mm -hmm. um, we can do more than that, particularly through our community center, and that's where mm -hmm. we're really wanting to let people in Missoula know that the community center offers um, uh, really great resources, life skills classes, parenting classes, mm -hmm. um, opportunities to do art. Our resource center manager um, has an MFA in visual arts, and mm -hmm. so they're, they created a mural on our wall recently mm -hmm. and are always doing kind of mm -hmm. projects to unwind and connect and just have some mom time. Uh, so we really want to let people know about the community center mm -hmm. um, specifically, and they have drop-in hours. Um, the best way to access the community center is to check out the website, give us a call, and yeah. once we get you signed up, do a quick, really quick cool. intake, then you can drop in, you can even use the computers. Um, it's a warm and welcoming space for lots of different things to happen. Cool. And um, let's go come back to the event that's happening this Saturday, tomorrow, yes. at... Um, the Southgate Mall, which is happening pretty much all day, and anybody can stop by at any time at the mall, any time to um, talk to you guys and just inquire what you guys are all about. That's right. So uh, Southgate Mall, between 12 and 8 on Saturday, um, stop in. We'll have a couple different tables around the mall, so you should be able to find us easily. We'll mm -hmm. have staff there the whole time who can uh, just talk to you more about what Mountain Home is, what the um, campaign is, how you can get involved. And again, the campaign is not just for people who want services at Mountain Home, but for all moms everywhere. And there's lots of ways to get involved if you want to volunteer and support, donate or support mothers in other ways. Um, that's part of the campaign as well. So um, since you're talking about the campaign, is there anything about the campaign we haven't covered? Well, one thing I actually want to let everyone know is that we are doing this campaign to let people know particularly about our community center and to build support for all moms everywhere. All moms everywhere are also in jeopardy because of the cuts to the um, state budget from Department of Public Health and Human Services. Um, so we are also asking people to call their legislators mm -hmm. and ask them to do a special session in Helena yep. to increase revenue. That's the only way to prevent these budget cuts from happening. They're just, you know, that's, there's only one way to balance a budget is increase income or decrease expenses. Yep. And right now they're proposing to decrease expenses. Um, in a way that hurts vulnerable families. Right, yep. and um, you you also mentioned that before we uh, did our interview, we were talking a little bit about this about how many mothers are actually living out of their cars. Right, absolutely. So more than sixty percent of the moms that uh, used our residential services last year were literally homeless when they came to us. They're living in a car, maybe beneath a bridge, or kind of uh, camping without power or electricity or running water. Um, and that's just not safe for them or their children. And that's, it's not acceptable as a community to 
have vulnerable families yeah. living yeah. that way. It doesn't have to be that way. And so we really need our state to continue the support. They've been doing a good job <laughs> of supporting these families um, through programs like ours. Right. And mm -hmm. we need to, now is yeah. not the time to cut those services. And, you, and you're looking for action now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now is the time for action. Okay, cool. That's so cool. if you want to give um, Mountain Home support, you can find out more information by going on to a Mountain Home empty.org and also you can call them at 541-4663. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Great. yeah great. So um, say hi. Uh, they're going to be there all day on Saturday at the mall. So um, even if you don't need help, it, they can always use your support. That's right. Yep. So thanks for joining me, guys. Is there thanks anything else? Us, Scott. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could talk about Mountain Home all day. I'm sure <laughs> Stacy could yeah. too. Um, so, uh, but why don't you come to our website or give yeah. us a call or, or come, come to the mall? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll talk to you. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Okay. And we'll be right back right after this. The National Veterans Service Commission was established by the Elks in 1946 with the sole purpose of providing assistance to our veterans. The mission is that so long as there are veterans, the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks will never forget them. Last year, the VA came to the BPOE headquarters in Chicago and asked them if they would assist the veterans in addressing homelessness uh, of veterans. So in response to that, the Elks National uh, committed $4 million that they are using for programs in eight major cities around the United States. While the program that we're implementing here today is certainly on a very different scale, Dick said we need a hundred and forty-five dollar Indian fund balance. So by they, law, by law. The and the reason I'm looking up here, I'm just trying to concentrate. I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the governor said, okay, if you won't give me the three hundred million dollars that I think I need, then let's take some money from the fire fund. The fire fund had seventy million dollars. We'll take half of that out. Uh, we will not do these things, which were tier one, two, and three, and four in the in in the bill, and that all added up to about a hundred million dollars. So the point I what we're trying to say is the wheels came off so much faster. Now I will say in confidence that the governor and his budget person thought the wheels would come off pretty fast. We. And because we're, we didn't choose to believe that. Um, the budget we did pass was $19 million more than what the governor wanted. If you look at his budget, it was $19 million less. So we actually put more money in it. Uh, we had 143,654 total inquiries last year. That was up 50% from the prior year, the biggest jump we've ever had. And we've been at this since 
How long have you been there, Barb? 14 years. 14 years? And so we see the potential. Um, next slide. In terms of public relations, kind of the other thing that goes on behind the scenes, we do a combination of things. Obviously, we work to put out story leads and information out to major media, but also big influencers, bloggers, other social influencers. But then we also invite ones that we think fit the right category, whether we brought military family influencers in this year, we brought in the LGBT community, we'll have a huge opportunity in, in September to focus on that with, with a writer from Seattle and from Chicago. And so we're really excited to see what the publicity strategy has done for us. Almost 14, over 14 million in total publicity value and just showing you some of the local and regional media, what it's translated to. And those are some of the new things that will be uh, airing on AMCAT this weekend. So the last thing that's like Missoula Art Connection, a little more uh, background on that. Tom Benson gave a presentation in, uh, on it during the city, uh, one of the city committee meetings, saying that how art basically brings in tourism and also brings in people, so people are more willing to spend money locally if they're brought places locally through art venue type stuff. So um, through uh, if art is free, people will go, but then also uh, they'll feel a little more inclined to spend money on food or drinks or anything like that, so it helps boost the economy in terms of that. So I just want to give a little note on that, but let's talk about something that has nothing to do with um, Missoula whatsoever except for the movies. So here is, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, Pre-Critic. As Tom Cruise constantly battles himself with stunts that are both ridiculous and unnecessary comes American Made. You want to watch Tom Cruise get into a plane chase while delivering drugs to and from America while creating the illegal drug trade along the way. Um, this was like the 90s cartel like trade stuff. But anyways, watch this based on a true story where they take the source material and only cover a couple things like the plane chase or whatever and made everything else up, basically. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, have you ever watched a Tom Cruise movie and said, hmm, I didn't know Tom Cruise was in this movie? Never, like at all. You, once you see Tom Cruise, you're just like, oh, look, it's Tom Cruise in the movie. Um, and watch Tom Cruise at it again as, his, as this aging star who looks like a guy in his 40s acts like a guy in his 20s. Um, up next, we got a reboot. From Hollywood, reboots and remakes comes yet another movie that stars a group of college kids who believe that stopping their hearts would allow them to get superpowers um, and play piano well. Um, this movie has Ellen Page. I love her. I love Ellen Page. She's the greatest. Um, in a movie that just seems to happen, the source material is weak and the story shall be as well. Um, it's like the movie was like, what if uh, we... And then a guy's like, died? Interrupted uh, Hollywood who wasn't really paying attention. Uh, they used that and hence became a movie. Um, that concludes the section of movies that are actually being made and are coming soon, or you would know it as pre-critic. So I got another movie for you guys because it is the first Friday of, no, it's not first Friday of the month, but it is the first Friday of Flagship. So Flagship kicks off this week, um, and it's going to be going on well until uh, November and parts of December. So we got a lot of kids from uh, Hellgate, Lowell, um, C.S. Porter in Washington Middle School. So here are some of the kids from Lowell Elementary, and they're doing a uh, kind of like a uh, horror movie. Uh, it's called Library Screams. Hey, kid. Excuse me. Huh? Library's closing. Can I just stay and finish this? Okay, I got a couple things to do anyways. Library's closed. I was looking for my friend. She said she wouldn't leave without me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she left. Uh, I mean, I did see her walk back and try to, you know, put her book back. If you want to, you know, check that way. I don't think that she would leave, but I'll go check. Oh, uh, okay. That's strange. She would have put this back on the shelf. Why'd you take me? Because I was the cast man! Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting 
need some backup. She's been kidnapped. Can you help me? Can What's her name? name? I don't know. Okay, my, f my best friend's been missing, so that's kind of strange. We gotta get you out of here before Cleo comes back. Please. Oh, don't do it! Guess what? I'm here! <laughs> Nobody says my lair. What did you do to just my lair? Guess what, Venus? The crazy lady's got me! Oh! <laughs> I do not recommend you do that, especially at school hours. Thank you for watching this message. Blueberry says hi. Hey you guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some city council, or as I like to call, um, a special school board meeting that happened this week that I'm going to cover instead of city council since city council was not available. I'll come up with a shorter name maybe later. Maybe not. All right, so let's talk about some things that are happening in your school system. Um, a lot of cool, exciting things are happening. Uh, top news uh, from MCPS is that many of the costs that people voted on for the school for the bonds, the 158 million dollar bond that uh, county and city of voters voted to have the schools updated and um, implemented to the 21st century, uh, have dropped. Uh, the uh, I mean, basically have dropped since the bonds have uh, been paid for and the interest rates have actually gone down. So they kind of refinanced. And so the interest rate went from 4% to 2.6%. So you can expect um, seeing lower uh, ticket prices for a lot of property taxes and whatnot. So look forward to that. Great. So um, here are some of the things. Um, MCPS is moving forward with hiring a, direct, a new director of technology for MCPS school system. Um, Current, current, beforehand, it was Hatton Littman, who was the Director of, of Technology and Communications. Um, they have a new person um, who's just going to be Director of Technology, who came from uh, Sacramento, who was basically uh, had a much bigger school system. So without further ado, here is um, Mark Thane, the superintendent for MCPS Schools, talking about it. And so it was with certain amount of trepidation that we saw uh, both Hatton and Russ uh, choose to take different paths in the district. But I'm here to tell you tonight, uh, we scored. Uh, we are very fortunate to have hired an extremely competent and well-schooled uh, director of technology. Uh, Ray comes to us most recently from Sacramento City School District, where uh, she was in a school system much larger than Missoula as the instructional technology director. And uh, she has a particular strength on the professional development side. And, as we have developed robust technology, I think the next frontier for us in the district is to make sure that we take the best use of that uh, tool that we have at our disposal. So I appreciate it. All right, so um, that was Mark Thane on that. Um, Mark Thane is concerned. Uh, wait, wait, OK, yes. So um, we're going to throw into another uh, subject. So basically, they hired a new person for director of technology, since they're going to be implementing some new um, technical aspects and improving the uh, computer systems and internet okay, uh, accessibility at the schools, while also protecting the kids from certain things they shouldn't be looking at. Um, but that's just me. Uh, Mark Thane is concerned that there aren't enough teachers filling teachers' position nationally, and seeing these themes start growing here in Missoula. We've been very fortunate in this district that when we post positions, we tend to have a large number of high quality applicants. But it's something I think we can't take for granted. Last school year, uh, the school year commenced with nationwide 100,000 positions, teaching positions that were not filled. And so we're either occupied by uncertified staff or long-term subs. We're seeing that start to creep into Montana. Uh, 
the place we tend to see fewer applications right now in our district is special education. But across the state, there are uh, positions that had gone unfilled and actually uh, have resulted in uh, people from other countries with work visas coming in to fill on a, a short-term basis teaching positions. So I think that underscores the need for us to be proactive, and I appreciate the commitment of uh, NEA, our local MEA, as well as the district, to try and get ahead of the curve. And All right, so uh, Mark Thane talking a little bit about that. Um, it may not be a problem now, but it may be a problem in the future. Um, but there's there's a lot of things going on for sure. But let's move on to the next subject. Uh, STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, has been a national um, education campaign, and while many na um, national uh, standards strive um, for this. Missoula School Systems has also looked into STEAM, which adds the A for our component, because a lot of times with um, a lot of more national schools, STEM is seems to be the biggest thing. They're driving forces for a lot of education, and usually arts are usually one of the first things that get cut from a lot of programs at a lot of schools nationally. Um, but um, here is Fine Arts um, Standards Adoption. Um, Fine Arts Director John Combs, who has also um, been writing this for quite some time, it's a 400-page document that other schools in the nation are also looking at as a template for their um, arts in art, fine arts adoption. All right, so the arts have always served as a unique vehicle for discovering who we are. The arts develop ways of thinking as disciplined as science or math and as diverse as philosophy or literature. The arts are used by and have shaped every culture and individual on earth. They continue to infuse our lives on nearly all levels, generating a significant part of the creative and intellectual capital that drives our economy. And speaking of economy, I thought it was interesting that a recent study showed that the arts in Missoula generate over $54 million in total economic activity. So dramatic impact. So what I've got here for you. All right, so he presented, um, John Combs, Fine Arts Director for MCPS, presented a, um, basically a, a slideshow, which kind of was a, it wasn't step-by-step, step, but it kind of overviewed this whole idea. John Combs also thinks that they should be, uh, they shouldn't be a yes or no to this, to arts as a curriculum. Arts work to create a personal discipline because art isn't always about doing something. It's about preparing to do things and using that to improve. So a lot of times, doing nothing is just as much as doing something within the arts. Um, if you're in band, you'd know, um, especially if you're a cymbal player. Um, with over 400 uh, page document that took information from national average numbers and statistics on how art improves GPA and overall educational confidence, John Combs thinks that the arts are um, for successful students. The central purposes of education standards are to identify the learning that we want for all of our students and to drive improvement in the system that delivers that learning. Standards, therefore, should embody the key concepts, processes, and traditions of study in each subject area and articulate the aspirations of those invested in our schools, students, teachers, administrators, and the community at large. To realize that end goal, the national core art standards are framed by a definition of artistic literacy that includes philosophical foundations and lifelong goals, artistic processes, and creative practices, anchor and performance standards that students should attain, and model cornerstone assessments by which they can be measured. The connective threads of this conceptual framework are designed to be understood by all stakeholders and ultimately to ensure success for both educators and students in the real world of the school. The arts transform student lives in ways that are unprecedented. All right, so that was John Combs, and um, basically that was an information-only section, and this is an ongoing process where it's going to be constantly written, rewritten, and uh, updated to uh, match um, current statistics as well. So up next, uh, there's Ted Fuller. He's a principal at Sentinel. He talks about advanced placement capstones. You may know them as senior projects. Advanced placement. And just some of the many things that I think benefit learners um, by challenging an advanced placement course or at Sentinel, the AP capstone diploma. So grit is one, passion, perseverance, and purpose, which uh, are the conditions of grit and that
that's a huge piece. Transformational learning, self-improvement, lifelong learning, and on and on. So we really hone in on why do we offer this program to our students? Why do we believe it's valuable and important? So, All right. So um, what a lot of these capstone projects are, are basically a big, huge project that the kids work on to advance their education, but it's also a good thing to put on their um, uh, uh, diploma. And a lot of colleges also look for this because they, they believe that a lot of capstone projects um, are a, a, a good ticket in to a lot of, uh, to a lot of good colleges. So um, for many years, senior capstone projects, or as we called them, myself called them back in the day, senior projects, were required by Hellgate and Big Sky for, uh, for higher learning. Sentinel has um, not done this um, and has for many years tried to implement this in their own right, but was unsuccessful. Um, a lot of the reasons were is because they had uh, their testings and they would interfere with a lot of their uh, other testings that would basically kind of interfere with um, any kind of senior project and stuff like that. But what they're trying to do this time is they're making the senior capstone more of an optional deal. So in a lot of ways, uh, this is becoming more of a um, optional thing for a lot of schools to do. Sentinel has kind of changed theirs into an optional thing. I think Big Sky still does theirs as a um, uh, an, as a requirement as part of being a senior in high school. So uh, Hellgate became a, uh, an optional senior capstone, and this time would also be an optional class for kids who want an AP credit now. Uh, Ezra Shearer is the teacher at Sentinel uh, running the AP program. I'm not teaching this class because of those credits that are attached. I'm, that's, that's, I'm disinterested in that. For me, it's the skills and the curriculum, and this curriculum is amazing. It is entirely skills driven, and so you have a course that allows you to have the freedom to cater to each individual student's interest and where they are in terms of their excitement. And if I don't buy into that curriculum, then the course isn't successful, and I'm really excited about this curriculum. So. Um, all right, so that was uh, Ezra Shearer talking about the Capstone Project and how uh, he's excited about it, obviously. Um, um, Mr. Shearer talked about how important this is for college, and they look at the students' diplomas and applications. Uh, IB program, International Baccalaureate program, is a staple to success, and right next to it would be the Capstone Project, according to Mr. Shearer. Students are required to get a four AP credits along with the two AP Capstone credits that are scored by the College Board when students are do a group lead class to review and seminar. So a lot of this is um, done together, but also done separately. So there's a class, there's a uh, there's a AP credit for a group working together, um, and then there's an AP credit for your final kind of like senior project where they do a presentation about your particular thing, your uh, skill that you picked up along the way. The cost of this are usually put on the students as well, but they usually run about ninety dollars for the credit as well. But Ezra Shear talks about the difficulties uh, between schools. We do not have weighted GPAs. That is a disincentive. The only, the only motivation right now is an internal, intrinsic motivation with that little external credit, right, that comes there. Student, sophomore, is making a choice between a regular course and an AP course. One of those comes with a significant amount of external validation for learning the test at the end of the year. The other doesn't. There is a golf and rigor between some of our AP and non-AP courses. Let's give our students that little bit of an incentive to take that more rigorous course if we believe in it. And I know I'm so boxing, sorry, kind of go after this. But, but if we believe in this, let's look at that. Because if you're taking a course, AP World, and you're in a school district that has weighted GPAs versus a student who doesn't, that's, we're, we're already starting that playing field. Right, so let's, you know, I don't know. You guys do what you think is best, sorry. <laughs> um, so that was Ezra Shearer um, talking about how important he is, how, how he feels about the capstone projects. So he, he talks a little bit more about this um, and more uh, about this particular class and seminar. There's about 
five or ten kids at Sunno who do not take the traditional AP courses, but also have tried these capstone projects e each year. Um, this is an, an incentive for a lot of students to basically uh, leave their senior year uh, basically on a capstone. That's why they call it capstone. Uh, Mark Thane um, also talks about uh, how you know he has a daughter who uh, they were looking at colleges and how how, how uh, capstones have basically helped him and it helps influence um, you, you, um, university admissions. What's most important uh, when you're evaluating a student for admission? Is it the GPA or is it the SAT score? And the admissions officer's response was neither. Those are secondary. What's most important is the students access the most rigorous courses that are available at their high school. And that's true because as Trustee Lorenzen indicated, that sends a message to the admissions folks that they understand what college level rigor is all about and have the study skills. And that's really an incredible value that, uh, and a gift that we give our students. So I appreciate again your enthusiasm, your dedication, and thanks to you and the Sentinel staff for taking this project on. All right, so this is a um, ongoing thing. It'll e be evolving and they'll figure out uh, how they're gonna implement this as well for the future. This is, uh, by making this an optional thing, it definitely adds it a little more easier for a lot of students to be able to take this challenge and be able to improve their education as they move on to potential higher learning, higher learning avenues along the way. So that kind of concludes what's happening um, with your sc local school board meetings and local schools. Um, we have another art clip for you guys, and this is being featured uh, at um, this Chris Browder, and I believe this is at the Gallery of the Visual Arts. So um, we'll have that, and then I'll talk about some events, and then we'll wrap up this show. And that art installation will be available at the Gallery of the Visual Arts, which is in the Social Science Building at the University of Montana, until for two weeks, basically. So Friday the 13th, ooh, will be the last day of that art installation. I didn't even realize it was going to be Friday the 13th. Sweet. Okay, so anyways, uh, that, that has nothing to do with what I'm going to be talking, talking about now, which is some events that are happening in and around Missoula. So Active Aging Week is today and at 10 a.m., almost right after the show. But if you've seen this afternoon, it's too late. Uh, as part of Active Aging Week, uh, Library host uh, representatives from the organization Missoula Aging Services to help folks sign up to uh, volunteer with Senior Corps. The organization will be tabling on the first floor of the library lobby all day starting at 10 a.m. A.M. So, uh, Ooey Gooey Slime, Family's First Children's Museum, from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Everyone's a scientist, and with Ooey Gooey Slime, children can make their own slime to add to their lab. Sled Hockey Clinic, I think this is a very cool event that's uh, happened at the Glacier Ice Rink. Sled Hockey is played by traditional hockey, except players sit in a bucket seat attached to a lightweight frame. The hockey skate blades underneath. It allows people with mobility limitations or disabilities to enjoy this game like their stand-up counterparts. Uh, throwback Game Night, uh, Fort Missoula Regional Park. Is, it looks like it's going to be going to do this ongoing series for a little bit while now, and this is happening from um, 2 to 6 p.m., um, and it's $5 to get to donations, and the whole idea is that learn how to glow photography and pose for professional glow photos. Um, 
light displays maze of lights, make a glow art, and eat glow-themed food. So the whole idea is glow. Um, they did a glow fest um, at the Fort Missoula again, but it looks like they're doing a throwback game night, and they're doing some glow fest stuff. So I mean, they might have some extra glow things that kind of carried over from that event. Um, opening reception, Minefield, Radius Gallery, um, at 5 p.m. tonight, they're doing a high-octane art radius new exhibit, Minefields. Um, Imaginative artists invite you to the most interior mind spaces. Do you have what it takes to get there? And you're joined us by a welcome to fabulous artists, which include Corny Blazon, Joe Bo Bodie, Susan Carlson, Pamela uh, Cogney, um, Michael Deming, um, Theo Ellsworth, Laura uh, Gillespie, um, Philip Slaughter. Um, and they're all going to be showing all their art at the Radius Gallery, which is just off of Main Street. Um, Family Friendly Friday is happening at the Top Hat tonight at 6 p.m. Every Friday from 6 to 8 p.m., the Top Hat presents Family Friendly Friday, where they have music, beer, and family fun for all ages. Um, Junior Bruins hockey game, Glazed Ice Rink. If you like the Missoula Junior Bruins, take on the Bozeman Ice Dogs in this hard-hitting ho hockey action at Glazed Ice Rink. Admission is $10 for adults, $5 for kids, open doors at 6.30, and the puck drops at 7.30 p.m. But also, tonight as well, is two separate games of football happening at um, Big Sky High School between Sentinel Spartans and, I think, Glacier High School. And then Hellgate will be playing at Washington Grizzly Stadium against uh, another team that I just can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's a Billings team. So uh, that kind of concludes everything in terms of your Friday events. Let me just do a little quick... Um, overview of what's happening in terms of like nighttime music events if you guys are interested. Um, Folkception is going to be, no, Folk Inception. There's Folk Folkception and then there's Folk Inception. There's two different things, unless they're the same thing. Who knows? It's a uh, folk in, within a folk within a folk. Um, and there's going to be at the Top Hat Lounge tonight at the, uh, at the Top Hat. Um, 406 Band is going to be at the Union Club. And then um, Electronic Music is going to be at the VFW with Chris Moonmark, Myriad, HNNH, um, Sarah Jarouts is going to be at the Wilma Theater, uh, Bluegrass Player at 7 p.m. Um, let's talk about some Saturday events. Morning markets are still in effect, so you guys still have plenty of chance to go check out the um, Saturday morning markets. I think they'll go on for another uh, week or two, so you only have a couple chances to do it as well. And it happens from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. most days. But also, there's another Missoula market happening at the Missoula Fairgrounds. It's one stop shop. You can. Um, it's a good cause. Uh, it's a multi vendor sale where a portion of proceeds benefit Humane Society of Western Montana. It includes clothing, women uh, for women and children, kitchen, household items, and made in Montana crafts, beautiful jewelry, and much, much more. Ten Spoon Community Harvest. So basically, Ten Spoon is asking people if they want to pick grapes for uh, Ten Spoon Winery's um, wine production. You more than everyone is welcome to help um, pick some um, grapes as well. If you've never done it before, it's a great experience to uh, go check it out. I don't think you'll be crushing um, um, grapes with your feet, but it's the next best thing. Um, Bitter Children's um, consignment sale. Lolo Community Center is hosting a sale for um, kids' clothing. So if you have a kid at any available age range um, and they're growing out of the clothes, and so they have clothes of kids who have already grown out of their clothes, and a lot of times with these kind of clothes, um, kids don't really wear them that long because they usually grow out of them within six months or so. So they have all these uh, clothes sizes from NB to 5T, if you know what that means. But um, So you can look it up by going to Bitterroot Children's um, Consignment at Hotmail.com to find out more information, but you can also call them at 207-6639. Um, uh, Cabela's Deer Hunting Classic. Um, uh, Cabela is hosting an event all day today, um, and they're talking about um, concealed carrying class, as you can pre-register at uh, My Legal Heat dot com slash Cabela's and if you're interested in it being be, being able to have a concealed weapon and have a concealed weapons permit you can join that class at 10 a.m. tomorrow at Cabela's um, it's seventy five dollars just so you guys know and there's scent control secrets so you know deers have a really keen sense of smell so you want you may want to cover up some of those stank -y smells from your human body um, even if you're clean it doesn't mean you can't produce a smell so you gotta there have some tips and tips and tricks in doing that as well and then there's a class about after the shot so after you shoot your deer game packing and retrieval and then there's long range optics at 1 p.m. Um, and then 2 p.m. is from field to fork um, and they teach you all sorts of wonderful things around that as well punk fiction dream journal Michael Deming workshop 
Radius Gallery. Um, he's also being a featured artist there as well, starting today at 5 p.m. But he's doing a workshop from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. where he could work on a punk fiction dream journal. Um, and the whole idea of this is assembling artists and they help participants trans transform books or journals into strange and unusual book assemblies. Um, taking the existing hardback book, they will modify it to variety of assemblies and painting techniques. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. So ice skating is at Glacier Ice Rink. Practice your skating skills and join some fun from 12 to 1.45. And the evening session is 6 to 8 p.m. And mission is $6 for adults, $4 for youth, and for seniors over 64. Skate rentals are $3. Heart of Evolution, River Pines Horse Sanctuary, and forget a perspective and importance of our four-legged friends. Join best-selling author Lee, Linda um, Kohovanov uh, for moving at hard times, mind-altering exploration of humanity's deep connection with the caring side of nature when she presents the heart of evolution, exploring the hidden history and untapped potential of the human-animal bond. And it happens from 1 to 5 p.m. at Montana Quest EGS and Horse Sanctuary in Missoula. Uh, Missoula Brewers Fall Rendezvous is happening at Karis Park. Um, it's, it's not Beer Fest, but it is Beer Fest in a way. But they can't call it Beer Fest because it's not. So that's basically what it is. And it's happening at Karis Park at 3 p.m. Food vendors, music, John Floridas, um, Reverend Slanky, and collectible glasses with every ticket. Um, Firefighter Appreciation Party. I just want to say this. Highlander Tap Room is doing a celebration of the end of the fire season. And they have a free pint glass. They have free pint glasses, brats, and um, um, appreciative pe people have brought over 500 beers for firefighting. For each pint used by firefighters, they donate 50 cents for the Wildland Firefighter Foundation. For anyone unused pints, they'll donate all $4. Beers can be redeemed all week until the 30th. Um, come to the barbecue starting at 3 p.m. Music by Dan Dubake uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. So they're going to be doing it all day at the Highlander Tap Room to celebrate our local firefighters and also the firefighters who have helped with the fire season as well. Compost Comedy, Free Cycles, is doing a uh, compost comedy at 6 p.m. It's with Missoula Grain and Vegetable Company Pro hosts Compost Comedy. The world's open mic where the audience is armed with rotten tomatoes. Um, Harlem Harlem Quinn produce and Bevy supports local organization for an end of season celebration like no other. Five dollars to get a donation at the door. Sign up to perform and get f and get in free. Um, doors open at 6 p.m. Open mic comedy begins at 7:30 p.m. Live music from Holy Smokes and the uh, Godforsaken Rollers to close out the night. So if uh, so, basically you can go there for the music, but you can come early for the comedy. Uh, Nick Offerman will also be playing at the University of Montana. Um, he is a humorist. So he's not necessarily a comedian. He'll be telling um, anecdotal, funny stories about his life and his uh, sawdusty musings and survival of the wild, living with enthusiasm, and then most importantly, the cultivation of a fulsome body hair. <laughs> and that's going to be at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. And Missoula Symphony Orchestra is going to be doing their 63rd season opening weekend at University of Montana starting at 7.30 p.m. It's Starstruck, and they'll be playing all sorts of uh, music from The Planets. Um, if you remember The Planets, they have a whole uh, musical um, orchestra event which highlights all the planets, even Pluto. Um, so you get to go check that out, and that's happening there. But there's even more events happening, including on Sunday, they're having a harvest party at Western Cider. Western Cider's harvest party kicks off Montana Cider Week with a bang. And if you like good music, great cider, apple pressing, food truck, um, dunk tanks, and more, they've got a party for you. And this is going to be at 501 North California Street. Um, and this happens at 10 a.m. And it looks like it'll be going on for quite some time, pretty much all day. Um, but if you're interested in doing some theater type stuff, Missoula Community Theater is auditioning for A Christmas Carol, the musical. You know, the old classic Charles Dickens, sale, Charles Dickens tale of um, redemption, an old man who doesn't believe in the spirit of Christmas, gets the spirit of Christmas, who is visited by three ghosts. But it's all going to be in musical form, so um, MCT will be um, hosting auditions for that. So if you have music in your heart, or if you want music in your heart, it'll be a great uh, show for you guys to do. I will actually be trying out for that. Um, you got Tour, the Fort Missoula World War II internment camp. So after your audition for MCT, you can go um, to Fort Missoula uh, Historic Museum, and you can learn about the internment camps that were here in Missoula. So... Um, Basically, if you don't know what the internment camps are, is where um, uh, the United States sent a lot of Japanese um, folks and families just because they were Japanese during World War II. Basically, 
you know, there's no simple explanation, but that's as simple as I can get it. It's like, you know, the United States was like, oh, they're Japanese, so they're our enemy, so yeah, we should put them in internment camps. So that's what we did. So tours are free, but I'll limit to 40 spots um, due to space limitations, and you get to learn a lot about all sorts of things that are happening um, during the World War II. Festival of the Dead kickoff event at Missoula Art Museum. Um, you can bring some small shrines, memorials, art pieces, poems, and or short stories. They will have uh, illuminate the, sh um, the shrine pieces and celebrate life and death. The Festival of the Dead kickoff event it will take place outdoor of the Missoula Art Park at 335 North Patty Street, and that's happening at 7 p.m. Sunday. So I wanted to mention a couple Sunday events as well. There's a lot of things happening this weekend. Um, once again, um, the National Parks is a folk band that will be playing the top hat on Saturday night. Absolutely electronic DJ music is going to be at the Badlander on Saturday night. Bohemia is going to be at the Missoula Winery, um, which will be performing after you pick all the grapes. Um, Rest Nass uh, Nassa and the Revelators can be at the Union Club at 9.30 p.m. And then karaoke at VFW for people who love karaoke. Um, that's kind of what's happening. If you want more information, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. It's a great website where you can find out more information about that and more. Um, MCAT, if you want to find out more information about MCAT, you can go on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your source for everything Missoula community access in terms of video, um, production, editing, and whatnot here locally for anyone who is interested. And then we also provide local government meetings for the city of Missoula. And I will have your um, city council meeting for next Wednesday. And speaking of next Wednesday, um, every uh, Wednesday, um, MCAT hosts an orientation. So if you want to become a part of the Missoula community um, public access family, you can join us every Wednesday at 530. Uh, you only have to show up once, and you're pretty much good to go. You can check out equipment, and you can learn how to make videos, um, whether for yourself or for MCAT, or basically help build a community. If you want to join on any um, upcoming shoots with us, we always have projects uh, that are happening, so we're always welcome to have people um, come in and learn a little bit about camera work and whatnot. So um, that kind of uh, wraps up everything about that. Um, Wake Up Missoula dot wixsite dot com slash wake up Missoula is a great resource for you guys to find out more information about my morning show. You can find me on YouTube. Facebook, and Twitter. All you got to look up is Wake Up Missoula, and you'll find me. We have a bunch of videos from our Flagship Friday, our summer series, past episodes, dubbing stuff. We got our interviews up here as well, but I always want to um, promote my stop motion the entire series. So uh, I might be bringing back my stop motion um, um, shorts coming up pretty soon, but of course, um, MCAT will be hosting um, Saturday drop-ins um, first Saturday in October, so not tomorrow, but next Saturday, we'll be kicking off our Saturday drop-ins for anybody interested in learning more about that. So, thanks for joining me this morning. I have another uh, music song that I've made for you guys, so I'm going to just uh, cut off my mic, and thanks for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Mm -hmm.